Hi, my name is Carrie Ryan and I'm going to give a summary of the testing that was performed in April of 2014 at the Nice UNR Shake Table Facility as part of the Collaborative Research Program, an innovative gap damper to control seismic isolator displacements in extreme earthquakes. This is a collaborative research project between PI's Justin Marshall of Auburn University and myself, Carrie Ryan, at University of Nevada, Reno. The graduate students on the project are Taylor Rawlinson from Auburn University and Hamed Zargar from University of Nevada, Reno. And this is an NSF-sponsored project with the grant numbers listed at the bottom. Throughout the development of seismic isolation, people always have been concerned about the what-if scenarios. What if a larger than anticipated earthquake strikes the building or the structure and exceeds the displacement capacity of the isolators? During the time when this project was conceived, there was a lot of research going on in semi-active and active damping to provide controllable damping that adjusts depending on the intensity of the earthquake. However, we had the observation that semi-active systems were not being rapidly adopted by the engineering community, and if we could achieve the same effect with a passive system, it might be a little more readily adopted, or at least provide an alternative to consider. Therefore, we came up with a gap damper concept. At the beginning of the project, several concepts for providing phase damping were considered, and this is the one that ultimately we ended up developing for testing. This is a plan view looking down from the base of the structure. You see that we have four dampers which are attached to a bumper system. And this whole system is grounded or attached to the base of the building. In our test it actually slides around on the base. We also have what we call the nub or a tube section that extends down from the floor above. When the earthquake first strikes and the isolated building moves, the nub will move around within the tube section and should freely move up to and exceeding the design displacement. However, if a larger earthquake strikes, it will hit the bumper system and activate the additional damping. Here we show our vision for how the gap damper would be implemented in a real building. Here see the outside of the building and envision beneath the building, at the base level, the system of isolators and gap dampers as needed to provide the extra phase damping. So here we're zooming in on individual isolators which could be lead rubber bearings, elastomeric bearings, or friction pendulum devices. And then here we show the gap damper grounded to the base of the building, dampers in groups of four, as shown, and the nub extended from the base of the building. A gap damper system was designed with the anticipation that it would eventually be used in a quarter scale shake table test at UNR. The design was based on a prototype with a design displacement of 8 inches an MC displacement of 16 inches, and an over MC displacement of 23 inches. Basically, this was the anticipated displacement in the isolation system if we did not have the phased gap damping. And the goal of the gap damper would be to bring the displacement back to about MC level. The phase damping is assumed to activate at 10 inches, and the damper stroke has plus or minus 12 inches. Corresponding model dimensions are design displacement 2 inches, MC displacement 4 inches, over MC displacement of 5.7 inches. The phase damping activates at 2.5 inches, and the damper stroke is plus or minus 3 inches. In anticipation of the eventual tests at UNR, component tests on the gap damping system were performed at Auburn University. These were unidirectional, low velocity, and primarily sinusoidal waves used for verification and characterization of the damping system. The tests were performed at a stroke of plus or minus 2.25 inches, and the tests were straight contact of the nub with the bumper system, contact where the nub was offset 1 inches or 2 inches from center, and then tests with an angled impact of the nub to the damper system. Finite element analysis was performed to design the contact element. Both a 6 inch by 1 half inch thick circle and 6 inch by 1 half inch thick tube section were considered for the isolation nub. Finite element analysis with the circle suggested that stress concentrations would form right at the region where the nub contacted the bumper system. However, if a tube section were used instead, finite element analysis showed that those stress concentrations would be largely alleviated or reduced, so it was decided to go with the tube section instead. This picture shows a view of the lab setup for the component test conducted at Auburn University last year. 
We have the actuator driving the isolation nub and attached to reaction blocks on both ends. Then we have the bumper system and the viscous damper is attached to the bumpers. All dampers are either attached to the reaction blocks or to additional damper supports which are bolted to the lab floor. And finally we have load cells on each damper so we can record their forces. This is a quick video showing the damper system in action during these component tests. And this shows the damper force versus displacement with a theoretical curve dotted blue line and the experimental curve in red. The experimentally observed force was not quite what we anticipated based on the properties of the dampers, but we attributed that to depressurizing the dampers before the start of testing in order to activate them at relatively low velocities. Following the component testing, we performed the system level testing at UNR. The system tested was a quarter scale single bay three story steel frame. The lateral resistance was a steel moment frame in the x direction and a braced frame in the y direction. In addition to the self weight of the frame, steel and lead weights were added to the floors, bringing the total weight to 76 kips. The frame was base isolated with four lead rubber bearings. The equivalent linear properties of the isolation system were a period of 1.15 seconds and a damping ratio of 20% at a displacement of 4.1 inches. The period of the isolated frame was 1.3 seconds in the x direction and about 1.28 seconds in the y direction. And finally, the supplemental dampers had damping coefficients of 0.465 kip seconds per inch in the x direction and 0.407 kip seconds per inch in the y direction. This animation is a look at the test setup at UNR. Here we get a look at the moment frame direction. The specimen sitting on the table, suspended between safety frames. Panning around, we look at the braced frame direction. Coming over to the top, we see the orange baskets, which are the lead baskets, sitting on top of steel plates, and those are full of lead. We have the same basic setup on every story or on every floor. And then finally, coming down to the base, we see the nub extending down from the base of the frame. We see the bumper system, the nub extending into the bumper system, and then finally panning out, we see the four dampers grounded to the table and the four isolators which are sitting on top of load cells. Finally we show a few pictures from construction. The first thing we did was install the isolators and the damper system. Then we brought in the three-story building with the exterior beams and columns only and the interior beams were lowered down floor by floor while the mass was installed on top. At the base level we have the cross beam shown with the nub welded to the bottom. This was lowered and rotated into place and bolted to the exterior beams. You can see the nub extending down into the bumper system. For the isolation configuration, the dampers were removed and the bumper was actually tied up to the base, as shown in this picture. Here's a view of the complete frame, and here's a view of the frame on top of the table spanning between the safety frames.